Hi everyone, today I want to show you a new spectacular sailfin tetra and other new tetras from the Colombian province of Choco. The Choco is located on the Pacific coast, separated from the Amazon and Orinoco basins by the Andes. Many of the fish found in this region are found only here, but we don't see them often in the aquarium. So today we want to introduce a new charison, Parastrema sadina. It has no common name, but Choco sailfin seems to fit. More on this spectacular fish later. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Numbers matter on social media, and the more views and subscribers we get here will allow us to do more videos. Let's first look at some of the other Choco Tetras, and you may be surprised that you're already familiar with some of them. Three of them are well established in the hobby. The two Emperor Tetras, Nematobrucon palmeri and Nematobrucon la Corte, as well as the Colombian Tetra, Hufesobrucon colombianus. Surprising that, other than these three, we basically never see any of the Choco Charisons in the aquarium. Pseudcalcius are Emperor Tetras on steroids, the relatively common Pseudcalcius Kiburtsi and the very rare Pseudcalcius Longianalis. There are more, but they've never been imported to date. Beautiful fish, but also several times larger than the Emperor Tetras and very aggressive. There are other small and good-looking Tetras, such as Sacoderma Hastata, Hephesobrucon condotensis, which is very similar to the Colombian tetra, Astyanax feste, and the very beautiful but larger Brucon americus emperator. I also want to show this one again, because finally we have a small group of these fish. This is Hemibrucon microforma, and we included this fish in one of our new tetra videos, but the video did not do it justice. This is a very small fish that looks a lot like the Andean tetras of the genus Creagrutus. This very small fish is quite territorial. In a 30 gallon or 120 liter aquarium, each of these little guys has a grapefruit sized territory it is defending in all directions. The overbite and very large eyes makes this fish look very funny, like a cartoon. If this could be bred in larger numbers, I think it would be a popular fish. The problem is that in nature these fish are difficult to catch and transport. Lebiacina are really odd looking charisons. The cigar shaped body and tiny fins make them look not very elegant. But in South America, they are also found in many habitats, in several countries, and often conquer rivers and streams that no other fish live in. Lebiacina feste has red fins, and you can see from the photo, these fish fight a lot. If you like territorial and active fish, Lebiacina are for you. The spotted Lebiacinia are more beautiful, with orange, blue and black spots on their flanks. And often Chocoensis, Multimaculata, Ortegae and Ariogotata may arrive in the same shipment. The problem is, they are also a little bit like small Hoplias and can be rough on other fish and each other. I found these fish are best on their own, or with cichlids like Andinocara or Mesoheros. That actually works well, they are tough enough as dither fish and reach sizes of up to 20 centimeters. But let's get to our new Choco sailfin tetra. I first saw this fish in the Peces del Choco book. The picture is of a fish that has been in alcohol for a while. After all, this fish was described way back in 1912. The photo makes it look like a slender bodied fish that could be similar to Soycalcius, and it looks a lot like Roatia altipina from Ecuador. In Paichtis, Nematobrucon, Roatia, Pseudcalcius, and Parastrema are all closely related. We have a video about breeding Roatia. Check out the link in the description. It was actually one of the first videos we made for the channel. If you like our content, please make sure to subscribe. Subscriptions and views are important to make this work, and there'll be a steady flow of new fish and habitats shown here. We also have a Japanese channel with all the same content. Much later, maybe three years ago, I saw the first photos of live parastrema from a friend, taken in Choco at the habitat. For one, the fish was much larger than I imagined, around 15 centimeters or 6 inches, about the same as Roatia. But also, the fins were oxblood red and really elongated. The fish looked like an African phenacogrammus, absolutely spectacular. The problem is, the location is remote, and parastrema is not easy to transport. Like many fish from fast flowing clear water, they require lots of oxygen and can't get too hot. The temperature should be around 26 degrees Celsius or 76 Fahrenheit, not more. Add in the problems with gold mining in the Choco, where illegal gold miners are slowly destroying the habitats, 
causing some choco fishes to be more difficult to find. And it would be until 2023 that I got the first three specimens, all females. Later this year, we finally got a box of healthy Parastrema sardina. After just four days in the aquarium, they do not show the spectacular oxblood red fins yet, but the largest males have the extended fins and measure a good 4 inches or 10 centimeters in total length. The males are constantly sparring for territory, but don't seem to harm each other. Smaller fish and females seem to stay together and remain higher up in the water column, while showing no aggression towards each other. It will be exciting to see how these fish develop, and if they breed the same way as Roatzia, with the male defending the nest and young against other fish. They are in the same subfamily, so there is a good chance. Overall, I think this is one of the most beautiful larger terracins to be imported in recent years. If you have questions, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching this channel, and check out some of the other videos linked in the description, including our new tetra series that now has videos of 75 new tetra species, as well as many videos showing the most popular fish in nature.